Hello, I'm Emily Heron, product specialist with Atlas Copco. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to use a scanner with source batches on the PowerFocus platform. I'll be using a PowerFocus 8 with 310.9 software, but what I'm covering applies to other products on the platform, such as our IXP tools and tools control. Let's get into the software. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the sources tab to configure a source batch. You'll need to have configured a batch sequence already for this to work. If you need more information on creating a batch sequence, there's another video that you can watch. Once you have at least one batch sequence, you're gonna navigate over to the sources tab. Tightening as well as batch sequence source configurations can be used with other inputs such as field bus or IO, but to use a scanner, you have to use a batch sequence. As with the other menus, you're gonna hit the plus button to create a new configuration. In the settings first, as always, name the configuration for organization. Then we have the abort on new identifier toggle. If this is set to yes and a new scan occurs, the current running sequence will abort wherever you are and the controller will call the batch sequence from the beginning based on the new scan. The identifier method is important when using a scanner. We need to have this set to strings. Number method is used for a single integer input such as a socket selector. Next, the free order toggle should be switched to on if you have more than one scan required to select a batch and you don't care what order they come into the controller in. You might not want to use free order if your process calls for you to scan a product serial number and then a part verification to select your batch as an example. But if you just have to scan a part and a color variation for basic data reporting, you could use free order. Next, in the identifier string configuration, we're gonna set up the characteristics of the barcodes that we're going to scan. You can have one to four scans on the PowerFocus platform to call a batch sequence, and you add additional scans using this plus button. Adding a scan means the controller needs to see multiple scans before it will select the batch. If you're using free order, these scans all have to be different lengths. Each scan can have a length of one to 1,024 characters, but that is also the total allowed characters of all the scans, so keep this in mind when adding scans. Anything after 1,024 characters will be ignored. Clicking into each scan, we have a few settings. Name, length, which means the number of characters in the scan, significant positions, and saved position. Significant positions are the positions of the characters within the scan that will be used to select the batch sequence. If the serial number of my product is 10 characters long, and I want the first three characters to identify the model type, which determines what batch sequence I want, and the other seven are, say, lot numbers, then I need to ensure the characters one to three are set as significant. Saved positions can be used if there are characters within the scan that you don't need for data collection. If you leave this blank, the entirety of the scan will be saved with the results. But if, say in our example, you don't need to save the model type, just the lot numbers, then I can set this to only save characters four through 10. You might've noticed that I'm using dashes to denote a section of the scan. You can also use commas to select individual characters within the scan. So instead of one through three, I could say one, two, three, or if I needed characters one through three and five, I can set it like this. I'm just going to quickly repeat for a second scan. Scan two, nine characters, significant positions in this case. I'm only gonna say position four and saved positions the entirety of the scan. I'm gonna leave that blank. Apply my changes. Now that we have our scan set up and configured, we need to assign which batch sequence will be called when these scans occur and which characters are these significant ones that we're looking for. In the settings, the default values just show as capital ABC, but we can configure this to be any character from the ASCII table. The barcodes I have today are just numbers, so this is easy for us. I wanna call the batch sequence demo batch sequence when I scan these two barcodes, so I have to assign that under the activates column. I can get rid of all the other ones here. So as you can see from my barcodes, Scan one starts with one, two, three, and scan two in the fourth position has the number six. So my string contains will be one, two, three, six. This is what the controller will be looking for to identify that I wanna call this batch sequence for this model type. If I had another barcode for a different model type where the scan started with nine, eight, seven, then I would make another line for string contains nine, eight, seven, six, 
to call a different batch sequence according to the needs of the other model. A small note here, if you have a scan that sometimes has a different character in a significant position, you can use a period as a wildcard. That's all the settings you have to configure for the source batch, but we still need to assign it to the virtual station as a task so that the controller is watching for these scans. Now that we have this assigned, we can go to the results screen and see an example of what to expect here. So now that we're on the results screen, you can see over here, I actually have two barcodes pulled up on my screen. Scan number one is characters one through nine plus a zero, making it 10 characters total. And scan number two is nine characters nine through one. This equates to our significant positions being one, two, three from the first scan and six from the second scan. So if I scan barcode number one, we're gonna see here that it pops up scan number one with one through zero, and it's expecting scan number two. So when I input scan number two, then it's gonna call our batch sequence because it's seen all the numbers it needs. Back in the controller, if we click over to the next page on the results screen, we can actually see here that my saved positions are showing up as my VIN. So in my first scan, remember I said I only wanted positions four through 10. I didn't care about positions one, two, and three. And my VIN starts with four because the controller ignored those first three digits and it's not saving extraneous data for me. And that was how to set up a barcode scanner on the PowerFocus platform to call a batch sequence. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local Atlas Copco representative. Thanks for watching.